Hey there, this is Jonathan, and in the following tutorial, we're going to take a look at some strategies for setting up a typical trifold brochure in InDesign. So one thing to know, of course, you can always go and, and just go ahead and create an eight and a half by 11 page. If you're not sure what pikas are, you can switch this to inches and you'll see it's eight and a half by 11. Or you can actually choose some templates that already exist in, um, in InDesign. So I'm going to go to a template right now see if I can find one. I know that I saw one here just a little bit ago. Just have to find it again. There it is. Pop brochure layout. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to download it. So there are some templates that are already here in InDesign itself and it will download that and it will give me basically everything I need to get started with the brochure. But let's take a look at um, a couple things about this brochure. Number one, you'll see that it is using what appears to be a single page. If you look at it, you'll see that I have single pages for these. And they even have one here, which is an eight and a half by 14 versus an eight and a half by 11 trifold brochure. Now, these are good, but they really don't give you a great insight about how you actually visually organize this stuff on the page. So I'm going to download some templates from some other places instead. So I have a few templates that I'm going to be using. First off, I found some templates. Oh, by the way, I should have showed you can buy all sorts of templates that are already made on Adobe stock as well, but we're not going there. We're going to design our own. So the slate group actually has some templates you can download, which is really nice. So you might go to a booklet and let's see if I can find the trifold. So um, those are boxes. So business cards, door hangers, it's really light, but Somewhere in here we have some trifold brochures, but I'm not going to worry about it. I found them and I downloaded one. And so here is the download that I got. I'm going to open up this thing in InDesign. And I'm also going to show you how I might make this thing better. Now, this particular one that they've given me has two major um, layers. It has a, an artwork layer and then it has the template layer, which basically shows you some some things to be aware of. It This is just a single page, number one. So you see it's a single eight and a half by 11 page for both of them. And then they have the template on here that divides up that space. Now the way a trifold brochure works is that the two panels on the right on the first page are the same size and the one on the left is just a little bit smaller. But we can't really, really, really tell that. Now another thing that you can see is you see this um, magenta line that goes all the way across and I'm going to go ahead and open that up and I'm going to go to margins and columns and you'll see right now I can adjust that if I want to to make it a little bit less of a margin or a little bit more of a margin I think half an inch is pretty big on a brochure but you know it really is about your design and how much um, space you want so I'm going to change that to 3.75 inches now what I really need is I need the same sort of guides for my individual panels themselves so the way to do this is to create a temporary object that is exactly the size that you need I need 3.75 so I need to make sure that I'm getting the exact same size 3.75 let me make sure that is correct and 3.75. Hopefully that's exactly right size. Now I'm going to take this object and I'm going to move it so it then is aligned with both sides of that, that center line. Now I want to grab out guides and make them snap to the outside edges of that particular um, guide. And I'll do the same thing over here. I'm going to get really precise to make sure I have those perfectly aligned in the center. They should snap at some point. Might even have to snap off and then snap it back on, snap off, snap it back on. There we go. And now I'm going to drag out the right side and the other side. So now you'll see that I have much more idea of how those guides are going to work. And of course, we would then take this and copy these down to the bottom page and try and do the same thing. Looks like, yeah, they're there. I just have to do the work to set that up. Um, okay, now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and save this. 
but this time instead of saving this as an InDesign document I'm going to save this as a template file. Now you can actually see that you can actually save it as an IDML and an IDML means that it can be opened in older versions of InDesign but in this case I'm just going to save it as a template file um, and I'll call this edited so I know it is the edited version. Now the benefit of this being an, a, an actual template file is that now when I go to the template file you'll see that it ends with ID um, INDT which means it's a template file which is great because when I double click on this the next time I open it up it's going to give me a new document because it's seeing it as a template not as an actual document itself so obviously we would want to make the, perf the changes that we need and we'd want to lock that template file another thing you would want to do is double click on this template file and make sure that that is not going to be set to print and that way it's italic that way uh, you won't have it and then I generally have two layers one which is my background and then the other one is the foreground so I generally do that background graphics and then text so on top so let's take a look at the other templates that I have real quick. I have two others that I've designed. One which is a single page, which is much like this one, and I use the exact same technique. The only difference in here is that it doesn't have a PNG in the background like you saw in that template. So here on this particular one, you can see that I have a left panel and a back cover and a front cover, and it tells me the size of 3.6875. 3.6875 and then 3.625. So this one once again is shorter because it folds inside. Now I also have set up my own um, margins right now which are only at 0.25 inches. If I wanted to make that bigger then obviously I would need to unlock my guide layer. I would want to make sure I'm on that guide layer, change my margins so that I have larger margins if that's what I want and then I would need to create a rectangle that then allows me to snap the guides out to the full length of that rectangle so that I get the guides to match that exact thing. I'm just going to move it by, by sight right now even though that's not accurate. But you can see that we want that inside spread um, to be the same. Now if we had graphics that were being used here, once again these graphics would need to go all the way out to the bleed it themselves but any content that you have would fit inside those margins that you already have there and so that may, means that now you know that you have consistent padding around your text or whatever else that you put into that panel um, and you also know that you have good clean edges for where things are going to fold so this is the one approach where you have a single page and then you add all of your margins and your and your guides into that single page there is another way of doing this where you would use multiple pages so I'm going to open up that template real quick so in this one the way that it's done is each of these is an individual page and you'll see now I have page um, A and B and then we have A and B which are master pages which have the sizes so that when you have two A's and one B you have a total of 11 inches. Um, the nice thing about this particular method is that now if you go and you add margins or you edit your margins you'll see you're editing all the margins on each individual page which does kind of make it a little bit easier for you to kind of get those to be consistent um, now one thing to be mindful of though is that when you go to possibly print this thing I'm just gonna go ahead and put some graphics on here real quick just so you can see what happens if I go to print this thing if you print in pages you'll see that you will get just individual pages you have to make sure that you are printing in spreads otherwise you will not get this to actually print as a real brochure you have to print in spreads when you're using individual pages but you have the benefit of it being a little bit easier for you to handle the margins 
of course. Now layers should be done the same way. We have our guides layer, which is a little bit more simplified, and then I have my background and my foreground uh, layers. But hopefully this gives you an idea of a couple different strategies for creating trifold brochures in InDesign, and of course dealing with templates themselves. And it doesn't matter if you use one method or the other, you'll see the page sizes are a little bit different on this particular one. We could use the page sizes that we had on the other one, which was 3.5. 628525 or whatever it was. Um, it's just people choose different sizes based on, on their needs. Now, if you're working with a printer, you might ask them if they have a template that they are used to using. And then you need to set it up by making those little temporary guides once again, and then snapping your guides to that so that you know that you are getting precision in your layout. So I will let you do that yourself. Go out and design some cool brochures and InDesign, but make sure you design it properly and that you have really, really tight use of these grids and guides. Thanks.